metallic thing you'll see that uh, is a pretty that is pretty uh, uh, pretty high level detail now what I will do is create our uh, C layer and how do we do that it's as simply as three clicks so I'm gonna go to view extreme edit or object create war it's done here we have our layer C layer here which is at this level here for example so right I'm gonna just try a quick render to see how it actually looks and see how nice this is it's, it's looking very pretty so I'm gonna just re uh, move down this uh, the, uh, our uh, train and uh, our fountain just a bit down uh, so we have just a little bit of this going through our uh, sea okay so I'm not just move them down actually what I'm gonna do is go to the front view here and then select our ground okay and our terrain and our fountain and move them just to something like this or like okay so and go to camera one here it is and I'm not zoom in a bit to have some and I'll also go to the render setup here and define code to common and define a size like one uh, twelve oh oh and 600 and just look here and next I'm gonna right click on the camera and show save frame so we're gonna have the our uh, output image here. and next what I want to do is to modify our C here and what I can do is go to viewline extreme uh, edit uh, object and edit object here and as you can see uh, we have the water surface option and we're gonna use displace water f surface so we have this uh, some more detail and uh, instead of using the global wave control we're gonna use here uh, some of these controls here and I'll pause the video until I find some nice settings so you can tweak uh, on your side or just wait uh, just copy mines here okay so here's the render of my current C here and I show you the settings okay so these are the settings if you want to copy them so uh, th th I didn't really modify the lot of uh, a lot of things but just some about of the height the wind intensity agitation and choppiness okay so here uh, you can uh, do your settings because they are very simple to understand and uh, pretty self-explained so just modify yours and now I'm gonna go to view again object edit object material and I'm gonna change my material by double clicking here and then go to liquids and here we have a great set of uh, of uh, materials so I'm gonna choose deep blue and ok and it will be applied to our material here and if I do a test render so if I do a test render here I think we're gonna see the difference yeah it's a lot better as you can see here very nice uh, color here you can see here the effect of haze which is very nice to to blend the sea with the distance here uh, okay now what I'm gonna do is work a bit on our terrain our terrain here material so we're gonna use some presets to now make the the tutorial uh, go longer so I'm gonna go to view line extreme object and uh, edit object material and now what I'm just gonna do is double click here and go to landscape here and we're gonna choose one from these materials so what I want to is um, a, um, a mix between some uh, cracks uh, uh, some rock and some uh, uh, sorry grass 
I lost my words. I'm gonna just double click on this one here and go uh, and as you can see it's a mixed material as we've seen uh, before and what I want to do is just check which material 1 and 2 and the material 2 is actually grass so material 2 appears rather on steep slopes okay this is what I want and I'm gonna just take a bit the effect and uh, the grass color is a bit so I'm gonna just move this here and come over here uh, just over here and change the colors to something more green here okay so not as dark with something with a color here maybe like this will be better okay so okay so here I think it's a bit nice okay pretty well I'm not like and let's check by the way in test render so here's my result actually and it's looking pretty good uh, the, ac the grass acts as I uh, I wanted to and um, our C is pretty well etc but what, what you can notice is that our uh, image is not saturated as it, it, it has to be so this is due to the aerial perspective so we've seen that in uh, the atmosphere tutorial atmosphere tutorial uh, so aerial perspective is actually when you get higher in the atmosphere you can see that your image uh, oh your image <laughs> what you see is being less saturated and covered by fog so this is what's the aerial perspective so you have just to go to view extreme at mass atmosphere atmosphere editor and then go to sky fog and haze and come to the aerial perspective and just take it to one here okay and click on okay and if we do a test render again you'll see that our image is more saturated and we can see more details just by looking here you can see that the grass is more green yeah, this is way better. Very, very nice. As I said, the quality is due to my image precision or anti-aliasing. So now, what I want to do is mm, maybe uh, modify the material of our uh, of our fountain here. And uh, if you, for example, uh, wanted to select your material and go to view, then object, and edit object material, you see that the material editor does not open. So you can you cannot edit your uh, any object emerged uh, any object you merge from your f max file or something uh, with the view 9 extremes material editor so you have to use your the max integrated material integrated material editor so to simply uh, to have uh, good material uh, simply I'm gonna use arc and design you can also use the material Monterey material which is uh, better uh, for creating more advanced uh, materials but I'm gonna just use the arc and design and select a concrete material also okay so uh, polished concrete will be nice and I'll apply it yes I will to rename this material as fountain for example here click OK and it's automatically applied. I'm gonna just click here to show the map and see if the scale is actually good or not. I think it's it's pretty well. Okay. Oh, I, maybe you didn't notice, but our fountain was not standing correctly on our. On our uh, now to add some 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 grass and plants, etc. I want just to reduce again a bit the size of my fountain as you can see here and position it to actually descend sorry to the center here okay and I'll add some grass and plants around it so just check if it's alright yeah it's visible uh, pretty well now I'm gonna add some plants so 
um, go to view line extreme object create and here you have plant and from plant species when you click when you click on plant it will take the last plant you used and it will import it to your 3d studio max scene and if you click on from plant species it will open the uh, plant species select selector so here I'm gonna use some trees okay so we don't gonna use too much so I'm gonna select them here I want to use some specific uh, but, uh, I'm gonna use this one here, date plant palm. Okay, so I'm gonna double click, and it will automatically import the plant. So here we can see it because it's just there. So I'm gonna pick it and move it to our mountain here. Go to the front view, press on F3 and move it up. Okay, and as you can see, it's pretty small, but I'm gonna scale it. Scale it something like that okay I think if it's too much big I'm gonna just move it like that it won't actually render correctly if it's too much big or actually it will not look good so I'm gonna reduce the size okay something to something like that yeah, I think it's a bit better. Actually, it's just to show you uh, that the integration is uh, fully is full between Studio Max and uh, and View. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, you can really copy objects like that, uh, cloning uh, objects like that when you maintain Shift in uh, 3D Studio Max. Okay. Uh, when cloning, um, sorry, in the view object, so you need to go to view extreme uh, object create and again take your plant here. As you can see, I just clicked on plant because I used uh, this date palm here and it will o automatically generate the same one for me. Okay, so here and I'm gonna move it like that like this actually go to our camera and yeah and move like this and yeah pretty well something like that and now what uh, you can do um we can add some here flowers okay so or so some grass. I'm gonna just do this rapidly so just you can see. Okay, uh, plant species, grass plants here, grasses plant. I'm gonna some patch of grass and distribute it all around here. And I'm gonna take it over here. Come to the front view and move it up. Something like that. Okay, and maybe scale a bit up and use some patches. I uh, know, actually, I'll not use patches. Okay, so I'm gonna just use some bushes. I think it will be better, or uh, something like that something wild if I could say uh, which is not uh, something that commonly okay go to perspective F3 and you can see how it does really look like so it's quick preview I'm gonna scale it up and place it top view and sorry for that I don't know why Max do this but okay, as I said okay so to not lose time I'll pause the video until I create all the instances here and then I'll be back so here's a render of our results so it's looking pretty good 
uh, we have these two uh, data palm here uh, which are pretty good um, uh, so um, I'll show you something uh, pretty interesting uh, where where we gonna import some objects here and we can we're gonna put like uh, a boat here or, or something okay so I'm gonna just go to my menu like view line object and we can create object and no not create object here import object okay and it will give you the ability to import any object of these uh, file types here uh, pretty much the same as when you go to file import okay and you can sorry here you can choose uh, it's more consequent the file types are more consequent here when you use the import from 3d studio max but I'm gonna go to the view menu here okay okay we are and I'm gonna just pick an aquatic one multi yard viking ship maybe or so so it will import it and here it is I'm gonna go to perspective and go there sorry I'm gonna zoom in and move it to our sea level okay top view maybe and take it over here zoom there go to perspective again and make it go up something like that scale it up not not as sorry <laughs> but for that I'm because I'm having some problem with zooming here okay I think something like that will be alright okay pretty well I just want a small boat okay so nothing very big or impressive so something like that I go to camera sorry camera one to just to just its position we can maybe make it like it's going to there and bring it in front of our camera for example okay something like that yeah we don't see people but <laughs> there Vikings there but it's alright just to show you that you can import the view objects there okay so let's do a test render here so that's the r here's the render once it's finished it's looking pretty good and um, pretty well so I think I'm gonna stop here for troll cause it's getting a bit long Okay, but uh, you you you've just got the uh, the con the concept uh, how to work with the View Nine Extreme into 3ds Max. So uh, uh, I was I was I've been sorry for that. Yeah. I've been working with this uh, like two one year ago, one year and a half ago. So uh, it's uh, pretty well. I don't really use advanced functions here really basic function for creating some uh, architectural visualization and uh, uh, for a case uh, I actually didn't have uh, a model which was uh, free or uh, anything like that because uh, essentially work with clients so they don't really like to uh, me to to use their own models on on tutorials so uh, I think it's uh, good uh, sorry for the quality but, but as I said for for the uh, for the care for our, uh, decent ma for my decent machine I think uh, I just work like that to have uh, to speed up renderings but for the last render I'm gonna get the final getter precision to medium uh, yeah actually here I'm working pretty roughly but I would actually go to the here uh, Andrew illumination tab here on the render setup and uh, modify this option till I guess something uh, which is good uh, which provide a good quality and uh, a good render time but so right I'm gonna take also the image precision anti-aliasing 
to medium and I render uh, my image in and I do I'm gonna double the size actually and render my image by on by clicking on this button here so here's the, sec the render on since finished it's looking pretty nice so um, we have these nice reflections here for uh, our um, island here or uh, part of uh, of terrain we have here this little boat here became boat it's looking pretty good. We have some variation in the water. Uh, maybe you can add some um, uh, the some mountains in the background, some uh, hills, etc. Would look very nice. But just this is to show you how you can use every pretty much everything of view into 3ds Max as the atmosphere, the materials here or here, uh, the water surface and water surface modifications, etc. So as you can see. Uh, view is fully integrated through this view max and you can use it to anyone on any one of your project to create a very uh, very impressive images uh, here just the quality is due to my as I said my image precision which is a low okay I put it to medium but it was taking some time so I put it again to low and as you can see this took about 22 minutes to render uh, this is actually d due to my uh, computer performance okay so I think it's uh, pretty nice and we've covered pretty everything uh, everything of uh, what's on uh, what's between view and 3d studio max and, ho and I hope you enjoyed this day and you are ready to start creating some beautiful images